I had gone through a little bit around, you know, field point that we are a service provider, been around 20 years, and, uh, you know, we've, we've implemented an awful lot of software and had many, many discussions with service businesses over the years. And what we're going to be walking through are really 10 kind of fundamental questions that, and things to think about when, you know, experiencing growth pains and looking for, you know, a new software application to, uh, to hear that. So thank you very much to Alec. I see that we've just uh, resolved the audio. I'm not really sure what happened there. So anyways, moving on to the next page, uh, page here, I trust that everyone can still see my screen, is key components of new software. So this is going to differ for everybody, but largely what we found is even though, you know, ser service businesses come in all shapes and sizes and industries that they service, but overall, you know, 90 plus percent of the requirements that a lot of businesses have will ultimately be the same. So where some may have a heavy focus on, you know, subcontractor management, others may offset that with having a lot more functionality around, or requirement rather, around technicians. Um, some will look to a service system to say, no, 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 a service system is a system that allows me to take a work order, schedule it, put some time on it, put a part on it, bill it, and close it. That's what a service system is, and to you, perfectly fine. Others see system, uh, a service system as a much larger application, one that might incorporate you know, the whole sales element or the prospecting element to creating quotes, to managing maintenance contracts or ongoing service, for example. So to us, our kind of definition of a service system is largely one that can do everything really involving service. It won't do every single thing that every software system in the world will do. It might not necessarily even do, you know, your back office accounting, but a good service system, especially for a larger business that has a more comprehensive service offering, will have that extra mile of functionality beyond just taking a work or perhaps it also takes projects. So these are some of the things that we've seen uh, in the way of, you know, how some people define really what a service software program is. And these are just some of the big items, at least, uh, you know, compiled by FieldPoint. So the biggest software challenges face in the service industry, this is a big question, and this again is going to differ depending on really on who it is you're speaking with. These are probably the top nine that, uh, that FieldPoint has been bumping into for the last 10 plus years around common challenges. And again, some of these may speak to you. Maybe some of them aren't necessarily relevant. Some service businesses don't even really deal with parts and inventory. They're more doing, you know, ongoing maintenance of big equipment. But let's take some of these examples. So, you know, subcontractor management. We're finding now in this day and age when businesses are looking to, you know, experience vast growth, we are finding more and more and more customers of ours that are looking to, you know, scale and grow their business by deploying subcontractors. And many systems will say, well, I've never really seen a service software system vet the, the whole subcontractor piece to ensure that that's something it can manage. You know, how do we get a vendor invoice out the door? You know, what if my vendors are doing the quotes for us? Uh, looking at systems in silos, a lot of customers will say, well, I bought this CRM application that our sales guys use. I bought this work order system. I also bought this construction project system. I've got this timesheet uh, app that we download from the store. I've got an expense app. I've got a an accounting system, you go, how the heck do we tie everything together, uh, which is a very big challenge. And some people will go to integrating various systems. Some will try to purchase one system to do everything. Where really, in our experience, we find generally the answer is, you know, one system managing each larger department. If it's one doing accounting and one doing everything service, and potentially one doing the whole sales marketing pipeline management. So again, these are some of the big uh, challenges that we've seen in the industry for uh, you know, some of the big challenges that not only a lot of service software or uh, rather service companies will experience, but uh, challenges that are, are particularly experienced when we're experiencing growth pains. So we're gonna go through the top areas of focus that, uh, that FieldPoint has compiled to what we feel are some of the big areas of focus that people should think about and how a excuse me, a service software system can scale with a, with a growing business. And these are really the five things that it's all going to come down to is a lot of it is going to come down to, you know, providing the functionality that you need. And a lot of it is going to come down to, 
you know, the technology. So it's one thing for a, a, an out of the box system to have exactly what you need. It's another thing if the software is, and its functionality is flexible enough to grow with you as the business evolves or if things change and I've got a new workflow process that we need to do or we've won a very high priority client that has their own unique requirements, how can I ensure that we will be able to do what this customer requires? A good service system should have a very compelling answer to that question. Speaking to the technology, um, not many barriers to entry to get in the software business and many systems that may you know, get created in the 90s or you know, on old technology don't have the financing and the team behind them to, to grow and keep current on technology. So a big part of being able to offer a, a compelling you know, growth pain compatible solution is writing systems that are really on the latest and greatest technology. So these are things to vet when you're looking at a service software system ensuring that um, you know, the technology is current because uh, that's the last thing you want is uh, you know, having an application that becomes out of date and can no longer be supported. Business intelligence, I have a whole piece planned for you on this, but this is just good reporting. Every single system has reports. Every single person I've ever spoken to that's looking for a service system wants to have a general understanding of what kind of reporting the system will give. I'd like to dive a little deeper into that today and actually kind of speak more into, you know, meaningful reports. And you'll see what I mean when I get to that section. Integration, so things actually tying together. It's one thing if one application will do everything. It's another thing if that system can't easily convert records from one section to another section or keep everybody in the loop. So integrating systems is, is of the utmost importance, especially for a scaling business, so everybody's in the loop. And of course, the last one's kind of implied, but I'm going to say it anyways. It's, it's partnering with an organization that truly understands your requirements and can understand you know, what your objectives are with growth and uh, you know, someone that is a, a service expert alongside you that can help you put an application in. So with all that said, let's go ahead and talk through kind of these top 10 items that we've compiled. There's a reason why this one was placed number one. Um, Workflow and escalations. I, um, this is something that when I'm demonstrating a, a service product uh, of ours, FieldPoint, this is often one of the first things, if not the very first thing that I'll bring up in a session, particularly for a company that's growing. It's easy to speak through automation when we've got a packaged, out-of-the-box workflow that'll take you from the beginning of a call to the end of a call. And as every service business knows, what we do from a service process perspective isn't really that complicated, but it can certainly become complicated if I need to reschedule appointments or if I don't have the appropriate part or I need to get invoices out the door and collect payment and such before I can schedule my people. Or what happens if I'm going to do a return of merchandise and I'm launching an RMA in the field? How is this going to impact inventory? You know, Suddenly I'm picturing one of these big flow charts like you see in front of us how on earth can a service, uh, service software system take this on? And really what it comes down to is this, for a company going through growth pains, this is where the administration headache can, can start to pound a little bit harder than it used to when the business was a little bit smaller. There's a lot more bottlenecks in a larger company as we're producing more and more transactions. A flexible workflow system allows you to determine what is the best process for you? And I'm not talking necessarily building you know, workflows from scratch, but being able to take a work order and say, no, no, in this case, I don't go right to dispatch because this is a call that exceeds $10,000. I'd like to get an approval on that first before I go to the next step. A good system should allow a flexible workflow application to grow and scale with your growing business. So some of the classic examples we see would be things like approval processes. You know, the classic case of, um, you know, I've got a, a change order on there that would like to be approved. And there's, there's some info on there that I'd really like to have somebody look at first and approve before we go ahead with the next step. Classic case of simple workflow. Is it easy to achieve these things? Am I customizing software by tailoring workflow? And how flexible is this workflow? Am I just changing statuses or am I indeed doing checks and balances and and kind of live reading the software as we walk through 
these examples. So this is, again, a, a very powerful part of helping with a, a company going through growth pains, because in most cases, the lowest hanging fruit are a couple of those key bottlenecks that are slowing things down. And this is often where we'll find, particularly even customers of ours, can, uh, can take a process that may take you know, a couple of weeks or you know, a couple of days and turn it into something that is you know, one-tenth of the administration effort. And that is all achieved via workflow. And you'll see this concept of escalations as well. This is in line with if a certain event happens or does not happen, what's the reaction? Or if I have a high severity call that comes in that needs to be escalated, how does it get escalated? Does it change color? Does it go to the appropriate tech? Does it get dropped into a queue? A good system should allow you to escalate calls appropriately so there's less eyes required on administrative efforts. All right, so moving on to the next piece here is uh, another good one that'll apply really for a lot of businesses, but not necessarily every service business. It's a reliable mobile solution. So if, if I have technicians or subcontractors out in the field performing work, I might not just be entering my time, collecting the signature and moving on. It, it's quite common for us to experience or work alongside customers saying, you know, I would really like to take the business paper, uh, paperless if I could, but I'm not sure if it's possible. I might lose my cell signal, so now I can't use my browser anymore. Now I'm stuck using an actual app. I'm using a small little, you know, phone or perhaps a small tablet. How can I possibly access all the documents that I need? Or what's the sync time between, you know, the data from the field hitting back to the server? A good, reliable mobile solution will give you lots of things. It'll give you the ability to choose what devices that you want to use. You'll be able to mix the kinds of devices that you're using so that you can support the whole bring your own device world, which is a, a big term in the mobile software industry now, whereby uh, your users can, can determine what devices that they wish to use. And it'll work regardless on the device. It'll size itself appropriately on the device, and you can use the device of choice to provide and, uh, and to perform your work in the field. So what exactly is reliable? Is it one that of course is not gonna crash? Is it one that is just easily accessible and easy to use? It, it, it's really whatever it means to you. And these are some of the big advantages that at least we found over the years and many, many years of providing a similar solution here is fewer calls to a dispatch center. So for us, especially in the subcontractor world, whereby we might have a whole team of people fielding calls by both you know, technicians or subcontractors in the field providing work, if a reliable mobile application is deployed properly, you can expect many fewer discussions or calls to be made from the field, which can very much translate to a simpler administration and more of an autopilot on you know, office to field coordination. Expedited invoicing. Uh, I, I don't know how many times I've seen that uh, you know crumpled up work order in the bottom of a truck. That you hear the story that it's you know working capital that gets missed for weeks before we get an, in those, uh, an invoice out the door, or cases where we're hand typing in the time and all the invoice details so we can get an invoice out the door you know when we're ready to. A good mobile solution should be able to get an invoice out the door faster, get you paid faster, and certainly improve your cash flow. So for many, you know, we're, we're focusing too much on what does the app look like? How easy is it to use? Do I think my technicians will be able to learn this? What's the training like? All very excellent questions that really should be asked and vetted of your software provider. But remember, when we're thinking about taking a business paperless and speeding up administration, what does that mean for the business? If I'm able to do a digital checklist versus filling one out uh, with pen and paper, what advantage do I get by having a digital copy of not just the form, but all the data that makes up the form? Now I can probably run better reports. I can actually understand my customers' needs a little bit better. I can get better trending information. And I know that now we're getting outside of mobile. Now we're talking more business intelligence. But a good mobile app is a, a great tool for collecting data that we otherwise couldn't with pen and paper. And of course, being able to take photos, scan barcodes, collect signatures, 
these are all very wonderful advantages of having a, a reliable mobile app from the store. So tip number three, we've sort of spoken to this already, but I'm going to touch on this a little bit more. Great question that people often ask. Very open-ended question. How flexible is the, op is the software application that I'm looking at? Oh, it's very flexible. It, uh, you can put fields on the forms. You can create different views. You can change the logos, the colors. Okay, great. Am I customizing software by doing that? Or if I write that integration to you know, X accounting system, is that a, a monumental effort? Is it customizing code? What kind of tools do I get as the end user to make the system my own? For us with a growing business, flexible software is an end user design tool set. So for me, I'd like to see what tools I have as the end user where I can set up the system independently and I can, I can try things and I can grow into you know, the larger functions that some of these uh, software systems will provide for you. Concept of a, a design tool set, for example, is one that allows you to not just to modify forms, but create brand new fields, place them wherever you like, make required fields, create forms that come up as I'm transitioning through my service process, tailoring my workflow like you saw a little bit earlier, setting up you know, permissions and security so that perhaps, yes, I will empower my service techs to run some basic reports and see some analytics to help them in their, in their daily jobs, but we will limit what access that they have. A flexible system will allow you to do these kinds of things, especially as we're scaling and growing a business. Reports and analytics and lookups, uh, we'll spend a bit more time on this when we look at the BI section towards the end. Um, BI being business intelligence, a flexible system will provide you with a number of reports that the vast majority of, of service businesses at least have a, a moderate level of interest in. A, a flexible system makes it easy to build your own analytics. And I'm not talking, you know, intermediate level. I'm talking, you know, drag and drop. Change the graph from a line chart to a bar chart. Choose to save that on a brand new dashboard view. Or helping to empower a new you know, service manager who's got you know, very little experience in, in software, who within you know, minutes worth of training can start to you know, create analytics that might be unique to his or her requirements. And of course, the last one, which is this field checklist capability. So in this day and age where more and more and more people are going true paperless in the field and using mobile devices, how easy is it to, to create forms and tables and checklists that need to be completed in the field so that if I have one particular customer that we're creating equipment records for or one particular customer that we go the extra mile for in delivering service, they will get their own checklist, their own forms and everything on their devices. So it, in our experience, particularly for companies going through growth pains, it's ensuring that a mobile application can help to alleviate some of the bottlenecks to lessen administration, and typically flexibility is what gets you there. So tip number four, built-in quoting, then this is an interesting one, because a lot of people right out the gate when looking for software systems will say, this system must integrate to, you know, call it Salesforce, or you know, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, or really any other CRM application out there, CRM being customer relationship management software designed for sales and marketing. That stuff is really designed for quoting, prospecting, pipeline management, marketing campaigns. And the majority of the products, particularly the bigger ones in the market, they're excellent. And many will go right to, to integrating. And a lot of applications will have pre-built integrations, you know, much like FieldPoint has pre-built integrations to a number of these, these platforms. We found that particularly with companies with growth pains, a lot of the time we find a lot of the bottleneck lives within the quoting and the, the upselling. And what happens if I'm doing that recurring maintenance service and I find something? Can the technician create the quote? Or what happens if I'm using subcontractors and I want to automate the process by which I get a vendor on site? 
Now I'd actually like for that vendor to send me a quote. Do I push this out to a third party system? Do I manage it in the service application? A lot of these service applications have just a very basic quoting system because they're really more designed for once it actually becomes service work. We found in our experience that by simplifying the quoting process as much as possible, particularly tying into the mobile device, tying into say subcontractors, so at minimum they can create quotes for us and then we can apply our markups and do what we need to do for our customers. This has been a tremendous area to, to alleviate growth pains and really increase the bottom line as we're able to get quotes out the door faster. I can compete a little bit better by standardizing that well, while I'm here, I can generate a quote for you. I can see if I have the appropriate parts available. Uh, sure, you know, I've, I ha actually happen to have a few hours available now. Uh, if you'd like, I can go ahead and create a quote for you now. Some customers will say this is really impossible based on the type of work you're doing, but even for those bigger cases, to be able to manage this inside the service system, what it allows you to do is to, as you'll see as the last point here, it allows you to very easily convert that work into a new job or into a new work order or into a new project. So at least in our experience, we found that having this built in to a software application, especially in a business that, that's growing quickly, we're still learning our way, still learning our process, by having it built in, I can now integrate to parts, purchasing, procurement, all of that. We can use the mobile tools the same way that our techs use it to you know, collect and receive data from the field. You can do so for your sales team or potentially out to the same group of technicians if they're also quoting work. So we found that there have been tremendous advantages of, of packaging this inside of a service system. So tip number five, we're about halfway through here, the checklist capabilities. I'm going to come back to this because as it pertains to providing field work where some customers have very specific forms that need to be filled out. If you take like the fire and life safety industry, for example, where there are a number of NFPA requirements that must be complied with and there are certain forms that need to be generated as a result of doing field work. Not just a reliable mobile app, but a good checklist capability application will allow you to capture all the data needed for these reports in a fully automated kind of fashion, but it'll also perhaps output to like a regulatory compliance type of document or in most business, uh, or actually rather in, in almost all service business cases where they're deploying a mobile app in the field, we need to be able to create a very flexible, very end user friendly report on the back end of the, of the system that I can now in turn send to a customer by the time I walk back to my vehicle. I can save that against the equipment record we're servicing. I can save it against the site. Checklists in the field allow us to do those kinds of things. And going back to the reliable app component, by having an integrated camera, barcode, signature line, notes, text, service history, and all these kind of various components, I can make all that accessible on a mobile device while I'm filling out a checklist. And if we sit for a moment and think, well, what, what does that mean? Does that mean that I can look up other calls where I've had a serious issue? And now I can perhaps troubleshoot the item faster. Does that mean I can get the job done a little bit faster? Does it mean that there's an upsell or a better service opportunity to, to better service my customer as a result of having more data accessible on my device right then and there on my checklist? In the case of filling out a checklist, is it a preventive maintenance kind of checklist? So if I'm in the HVAC uh, business and I'm doing my you know, quarterly seasonal inspection, or am I quoting a new construction job where I'm walking the job, collecting data and doing more of a site assessment? By bringing that information back into the system, now in each of the individual fields coming back into the software, I can run reports against this stuff and learn more about my customers. And of course, by having integrated quoting, I can get quotes and documents out the system faster. So really it's starting to tie together a lot of those, those tips that we've seen so far between the mobility, the quoting, 
a checklist in, in many business cases is a big part of uh, alleviating a lot of those bottlenecks that you might have, particularly in a growing service business. And a couple examples, again, of checklists is one that is mobile friendly, works on any device, but most importantly, sizes itself appropriately to the type of device that you're using. Tip number six is a fun one because every business is a little different. And field point here is really no exception. For field point specifically, as a best of breed service application, for companies like ours, we would pride ourselves in having a number of integration points. But largely what we find, particularly in the service world, is some customers will go and use a third party you know, ERP or enterprise resource planning application like, uh, like NetSuite or you know, Dynamics 365 or what have you. And with FieldPoint and its integrations that it offers, the reality is most businesses will not use one product to run the entire business, largely because this kind of software doesn't exist until we get into the, you know, well into the seven figures. Now, a properly integrated system is one that allows you not to reinvent any wheels, but to allow each respective system to do a, what it's designed to do, and B, to do what it is designed to do best. Now, looking at the diagram here, where you might have, for example, certain tax automation suites, perhaps you've got you know, add-ons to an accounting system that you're using, or perhaps, uh, like we'll see a lot in the industrial service space, is products like Service Channel, doing the whole Internet of Things or IoT concept, whereby that system is doing a lot of our facility management and can ultimately plug into your service system to start creating notifications. And what's the advantage of being able to tie you know, accounting information back to service? Well, I can probably deliver better service for my customers for one, by having more people involved and, and in the know as to what's happening. If I've got customers in, in payment arrears, that would be a, a better time to start you know, considering you know, receiving payment. If I've got a sales team that's able to take a look into the service application via integrations and see exactly where things reside, how well we're servicing our customer, or perhaps use that data to, to upsell additional opportunities. So a properly integrated system isn't just you know, batching some data from time to time and just dumping it over into the other system. A well-integrated system, if you are employing you know, more than one software application, will allow you to do real-time I, I hate to use the word synchronization because in many cases it's put in a record, hit save, and that is the transaction to bring something across to another system. But um, in, in many cases, I can tie in numerous applications so that as soon as something happens, it updates the other. Or in the case of purchasing, when a service rep on their mobile device says, I don't have this part, I think I should get one, we can push requisitions, purchasors, and such directly into other applications right away, and as should any system that a service business goes with, particularly as it's going into a, a growth cycle. These here are simply some common examples that we've seen over the years between ERP systems, IoT platforms, uh, you know, subcontractor systems like Work Market, where you know, they've got labor platforms out there that do a really great job of, of finding you know, freelance laborers to perform work. And how can a service system tie into that? Okay. And again, here are a couple other examples as well. Payroll is another common one. Most service applications will tie in time, but how does that tie into time for payroll? So many applications will actually integrate so that by the time a timesheet's approved, it can automatically find its way into a payroll application. So going into number seven here is around planning and scheduling of resources. And this one is largely going to differ depending on all sorts of things. If it's dispatching a small number of internal technicians, or if I'm not a self-performing organization that's you know, assigning and, and planning for you know, subcontracted resource. If I'm scheduling three hour, eight hour, 24 hour jobs, or if I'm doing two, three, six-month jobs. 
a good service system allows you to schedule and actually plan for your resources and manage things like capacity and demand and you know winning new new jobs down the line and being able to know ahead of time what kind of capacity am I currently looking at so what we found with our customers particularly a lot of them are not just doing service a lot of our customers or and people we've talked to over the years will have you know projects they have not just the service work but they're doing the larger install work be it install or construction or what have you and I don't really have an effective tool to see all of my people, their availability, being able to easily assign a resource to a project and effectively see what kind of demand that we need to fulfill. So an effective scheduling and planning of resources tool allows me to manage both the install and the service. So I should be able to look at one holistic view to see everything involving service and everything involving all of our resources and their availability, regardless of the type of service that they perform. So in many cases where I might pull an installation resource to, to work on service, you know, one cohesive calendar can show me everything. The second is sort of a given when you're talking with a, a, a later kind of current software provider is one that is, is up to date technology wise is it's drag and drop. It's um, it allows me to, move things around, plan my resources, and I can do so with a simple drag and drop or point and click. Skill set and geography tracking is becoming more and more important, particularly as Google has, has really enhanced a lot of its mapping functionality and such as well. If I'm looking to schedule you know, a, a highly trained resource that I need a particular skill set that is up to date, or perhaps a particular site requires a certain type of, of certification or you know, medical certificate? How can we ensure we're scheduling the right people at the right time and can best optimize the scheduling of our people? And this directly ties into this capacity planning piece as well. This is often a question that I find is missed a lot. Is it's one thing to show a tool that helps me to plan my resources and be as, as effective as possible. It's another thing if I'm delivering a lot of service booking some of that work into the near or perhaps distant future and being able to see things like, if I get this new big project, do I even have enough capacity over the next couple of weeks to begin this thing? What kind of labor percent capacity are we currently running at? Or for this particular type of resource group, I might not have things booked in their actual calendars yet because we haven't actually planned who the people will be yet. But of my 3,000 hours of labor that I've got available that, uh, that week, I'm currently sitting at 2,800 hours likely to be booked. I'm gonna need 4,000 hours for this particular engagement. Do I even have enough time? So a good service system, particularly for those that are doing a lot of resource planning and trying to optimize their workforce, capacity planning is a very important one for the right type of customer. And in the way of scheduling resources, another piece that's, that's often missed, particularly by customers that are not using a lot of um, subcontractors in their business, at least currently, we are finding a trend with more and more businesses truly moving to a subcontracted model, not necessarily that they do everything, but we found in our experience that this is what has helped a lot of businesses start to operate outside the state, start to become you know, country or continent wide, largely with the help of subcontractors. So as much as a drag and drop tool set is nice for planning resources and moving things around, how do you schedule a subcontractor? It's not the same way that you plan technicians. And if this is a growth strategy that, it, that you're thinking about, or if you haven't already employed it, having a good subcontract and planning of, of resources, a big part of, of a software system that's often missed until the requirements sort of manifest. So we like to mention this early on. Tip number eight, better PM automation, PM being preventive maintenance, not to be mistaken by project manager. Um, not that we can't help to better manage a lot of the project activities as well when looking at a service system. But another big one that we find, especially for businesses that are doing a lot of preventive maintenance work, is how to properly automate this so that you know, not only will the work orders create themselves automatically, that's the easy part, but how can we set up very flexible schedules? So if uh, your business, which is like many of them out there, 
that have very flexible rules as to how often they're created. Is it the first Monday of every quarter? Is it the uh, you know the second Tuesday of you know triannually or whatever kind of frequency you set? On each appointment, do I have certain regulatory compliance, like in the refrigeration business? Am I taking out you know Freon or refrigerant, which requires a certain checklist to be filled out? For EPA requirements, or am I going to be uh, you know retagging extinguishers? In which case, I've got certain things I need to fill out. So a properly automated PM system that allow you to kind of grow and scale and lessen administration if, if you've got it, will allow you to define a whole schedule ahead of time, start planning who the resources will be, and ultimately not just create the work order, but find their way to the appropriate resource with all the things that they need on their mobile app, can find their way into their calendars if, uh, if you've taken it that far in automation, and can really help to alleviate the whole creation to completion of a work order all the way up to the point of billing. So for many of our customers that are doing um, you know, ongoing preventive maintenance, here's an example for the HVAC industry specifically. It's seasonal inspections. There's a regulatory compliance effort, particularly when it comes to refrigerant. There's consolidating of work orders. So you know, one work order with several tasks or you know, several pieces of equipment that we're tracking on a single work order. There's the checklisting, there's the tech versus subcontractor piece. So this can apply really to, to a lot of service uh, businesses, particularly those that are doing recurring service. If it's automated well, you can take on an awful lot more PM work and properly automate things to lessen the amount of calls and really lessen the overall administration and hopefully increase the cash flow along the way by being able to get the checklist filled out, the document in the customer's hands, the invoice out the door a lot faster, tying in with your purchasing system or your inventory system via these third party, in the, uh, third party integrations that we speak to. So these are great examples of very easy automation capabilities of a good software system, particularly while you're while you're scaling and growing. So with a couple more tips uh, here in our pocket, tip number nine is an interesting one. Um, in our experience, we found an awful lot of, of service businesses asking for portal technology. Sure it would be great if customers can log in. And questions that we'll often get are, what will your customer portals do? And in further discussion, you say, I just really want to be able to service my customer better. And what kind of tools can I make accessible from them? And what are common things that other businesses are doing in a customer portal? You know, how do we make the best of this? And really for us, we don't even necessarily call them customer portal. We call these self-service portals here at Fillpoint, largely because it's not just customers logging in. Sometimes it could be vendors. It could be partner companies. It really could be anybody logging into a good service system that's flexible to determine what exactly you'll share with them. But the nice thing with having you know, specific to a customer portal is you can choose to display really anything in, in a good software system and know that you won't compromise any data that you don't wish for a customer to see. So common examples that at least Fieldpoint has seen is of course the value add of being able to offer a place for customers to log in and, and get access, but things like approving quotations, particularly the small ones via the convenience of a portal or a hyperlink that auto appends itself to every email that goes out automatically to the customer with a have questions, here's where you log in. You can find it, uh, you know, find an answer yourself or perhaps you can access a knowledge base. So you can probably troubleshoot some things yourselves before calling us. It's a nice value add. Some will want to see the equipment history or service history without having to send reports or downloading invoices to make the accountant's lives uh, a little bit easier if they wish to go back and download something. So it's a nice value add, but in many cases we found it, it, it truly does lessen the administration, particularly when those will go into to log service requests and spend time off of the phone, in which case a good service system can receive that and know how to process it effectively. So this is something that is often asked, particularly a field point, and the answer around what exactly we provide is different because a lot of customers are looking for different things. But a good software system can allow 
customer or vendor or, or partner access to really whatever that you want. Now, I've saved the big one to the end. So business intelligence. Uh, this is my favorite part of any service software discussion I found that I've had with, with business owners and service managers and, and, and IT professionals over the years. This is something that everybody knows uh, when looking for a service system is it, it's got to give me the reports that I need. And sometimes you'll get asked the question around, you know, what reports am I not thinking about that would be valuable to my business? Or what is the method by which I get these reports out? Are they real time? Who can access these reports? These are all very common and very important questions. To me, the most important thing, of a, more so than anything else, of a good service software system is one that will give you reports that matter and will give you analytics that will actually help you to run your business better and to, uh, to increase the bottom line. And there are so many ways that this can be achieved. Looking at this image here, more and more particularly the smaller business owners that spend a lot more time, say, on the road and don't have, like, um, you know, analysts in an office that can, you know, program up reports and get what you need, but it's mobile-friendly. It'll, it'll let you know things as a business owner when certain events or, or activities are taking place. If there's a certain trend in your business, a good business intelligence tool, we're not even calling it reporting, we're calling it business intelligence, a, a good BI or business intelligence tool will tell you the data as things are coming. Maybe it's every now and then a notification of something that's happening, but better yet would be a dashboard view, especially this concept known as exception reporting, which you'll see here as the second line item. Did you know that you have a project right now that on the surface looks like it's going okay, but it's actually 15% behind where you should be. And if this continues, it's going to eat into your, your gross margin. Did you know that? The, the lights are blinking green that things are, are on track, but based on the fact that you, know, you should be at 50% of the way through the project now and your PM team says you're at 30%, that's a problem. Do I want an email every time this happens? No, because then this becomes spam, but I don't want to have to run that report every single day, otherwise I might miss things. It needs to be easy. A good BI or business intelligence system, the trending information comes to you. It comes in the form of dashboards that will only display things that matter to me. And this goes without saying, but this is often something that, that, it, that goes unasked is, are these things real time? Who owns the business intelligence? Am I licensing this from a third party? Is this a third party tool that perhaps integrates so I'm actually kind of dual licensing something and I'm paying for something extra? In the case of job costing and project accounting, this is of course just another given, but allowing a business owner or a service individual to access not just project accounting, job costs, but really anything involving service, number of work orders, dollars and cents, you know, we had a great 15% increase this month, but did you know that that's actually 8% less than it was the same month last year? That's good information to know. My report doesn't show that. I like that number. How do I get that? Do I call my service provider and have them, you know, custom build me a report? Or do I just drag and drop a field over, change a view, and now I can get the analytics that I want in this moment, real time? That is largely the distinction between a good software application and an excellent one that can truly make an impact on a service business. And often it comes down to profitability and job cost, but there's so much more opportunity in things like trending information. Maybe a certain make and model um, skew that you've added to your, to your roster and you're having tremendous success and you're finding that you're actually getting a better percentage or margin percentage out of servicing a new make model. That would be a great thing for a business owner to know, but generally not an out of the box report that most systems will have. So how can I get it? A good BI tool 
will give you this kinds of, uh, these kinds of tools to allow you to get exactly what you need in a format that actually works. And just to wrap this up as well here is utilization rates is another classic area that is, that is often overthought or even underthought, I should say, is I see that my guys are super, super busy. We're traveling from site to site. Cash flow is looking good. Things, things are great. But did you know that that one resource is spending 22% more time on the road than the other one is? So yes, his, op or his utilization rate looks great because he's going from site to site to site. But why is it that one resource is spending a lot more time in the car? I wonder if there's a better opportunity for me to lay this out so that we can increase that billable utilization percentage. So again, good BI tools will give you everything. If you're going to work so hard to put all this data into the application, it is extremely important to be able to get the data out in a format that works for you. And we found, at least in our experience, that a good BI tool, this is what supplements downloading reports. This is what allows me to access the convenience of just one dashboard. Good morning, Greg. Here are the top six things that you should know today via this concept of exception reporting. So to wrap up the, uh, the webinar this, this afternoon then, we hope that you've been able to, to learn a couple nice tips and tricks and things to think about, particularly in a growing business. In FieldPoint's case, this is really our story, is you know, the empowerment of, uh, of, of workforce, getting more people using mobile technology, providing you know, more readily available information for people that are providing work, streamlining things, increasing satisfaction, alleviating bottlenecks anywhere we can. We found that in our years of, of delivering this kind of service and by providing a, a very leading edge, very flexible application, these are just some of the benefits that we found that we're able to provide over the years. My hope that uh, as a takeaway for, for those of you that have been kind enough to join is it better arms us with questions to, to think about when we're vetting software applications. There's some great content online of great questions to ask and think about when, uh, when evaluating service applications. But in some cases, it really does go the extra mile of, I wanna see not just how flexible it is, I wanna see the tool set. Or I'm seeing a lot of really great reports that I need now, what things might I need later? And how readily available are the tools that I'm gonna to need to get those kinds of things? And often it takes going that extra step in the evaluation to get a much better comfort level with the provider that you ultimately select. So with that said, I really hope that, uh, that you've enjoyed the webinar. Uh, the, the questions on me have actually been relatively light today. I only got uh, actually one email from, uh, from one of you around the, the size and scale of companies that we work with. Um, so you know, I mean, as to, to address that relatively quickly, by offering a cloud solution, we find that we can very successfully help customers that are you know, small, medium, and large. Um, so if you are a you know, five, 10 technician enterprise or, or larger, we, uh, we find that we can certainly be a great fit for companies of, of really all, all shapes and sizes. There was a question as well about IoT, uh, but I didn't capture what, uh, what industry you might be working in. So. IoT providers, this has been another big area for us as of late. Uh, a lot of companies are now finally starting to deploy uh, equipment with IoT sensors on them. So a good service system will have sort of an IoT strategy because this largely is at least where FieldPoint feels that a lot of the service software business will, uh, will be going. Um, Companies like ours have a flexible API, so we can tie into a number of, uh, of IoT partners. We're working on some currently, and we do have some customers that are, have deployed IoT technology quite successfully. Um, best to find out who exactly the providers are, and then we can always speak to you know, how exactly the, uh, the integrations would work, and if it's one that's currently supported or not. But it's a great question to ask, and if there are certain providers that you know you're working with, I personally feel it'd be very advantageous to have those conversations with your service software provider. Uh, if you look at some of the numbers of 
how many devices currently in, in North America only that are IoT compatible, it's, it, it's startling. Um, so I, I'm very much of the opinion that if you've already started to partner with some of these providers, you should likely be asking uh, your software professionals and your software partners if these are things that they can support. Well, everyone, if there aren't any other questions, I really want to thank you all very much for your time. I hope that uh, we've gotten some takeaways from today's session. If you have any questions for us at any time, please, by all means, feel welcome to use the phone number or email that you see here on your screen. And really, really appreciate your time. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Bye now.